Well, I've had my first battery failure and I'm not completely surprised by that. So this is one of the first batteries I made for my solar install. And I'm not sure if it's something I did or just a failure of the BMS or one of the cells or what happened, but cells failed. It was started discharging every night and it would bring down all the other battery packs to their lowest limit. Had about, it's supposed to be a 48 volt battery. It had about 14 volts in the mornings. So I pulled it out of the system. It's one of my quick detach ammo box batteries. So it was easy just to unplug it and bring it in to take it apart. So I've started pulling it apart a little bit and I thought I'd show you what I found because there's a lot of questions when in the build videos of these on certain things. So one of the questions that I see a lot of is do the dissimilar metals on these little rivets corrode? And they do not, at least after a year and a half or so. These are in perfect shape and there's no there's no corrosion on any of the packs where I've ripped them apart. It's all real clean metal in there still. So dissimilar metals, not an issue apparently. And I live in the humid south, so if it was going to corrode, it would corrode here. So the failure I noticed was a couple of these cells are real puffy. Or bloated, I guess would be the more correct term. You can see that one's bloated. Some of these interior cells are bloated. So I've started taking it apart just to take a look and see if any of the cells are salvageable and so I can dispose of this better by having all the cells taken apart and nothing potentially active. So I've got four packs off or four cells out already and I got to the first one that looks pretty good still. It's pretty flat so I'm going to disconnect this and then we'll check the voltage. And to disassemble this, I'm just doing it the same way that I assembled it, just one at a time, keeping everything taped up. So you can see that cell is pretty flat still, no bloating at all, so we'll check voltage on this real quick. So I've had this pack sitting out of the system for about two weeks, just to give it a real good chance to possibly discharge anything it might have left in it. So I'm not expecting much, but we'll see what happens. So I've got two and a half volts which is about the minimum for this. So this cell still might be good. Now I'll check one of the bloated cells just to see what kind of reading I get on one of these. This one's at 1.1 volts. So that's why I'm pretty sure these, all these bloated ones are just gonna be toast. One of the reasons I may have had a failure is you can buy these packs in two different ways. You can buy them like this, just kind of loose, or you can buy them where they have a plastic compression holder. And of course I was being cheap and I didn't buy them with a the plastic compression holder. So there's a possibility that I needed that compression and that is what caused the failure. Some of my later packs that I built, I wrapped a lot more tape around them just out of, I guess, habit. And this one didn't have quite as much tape, and the tape also acts as compression. So it's a possibility that that's the failure. So if anyone's had a similar experience and you've kind of figured out what it is, let me know. So I'd be kind of interested. These packs aren't too easy to get anymore, so I've kind of moved on from them, and I'm using uh, more 18650s now. But it'd be good to know if there's a, a way to save this from happening to future packs if anyone were to build one. This is another pack that looks real good. It's nice and flat. So I think this one's probably okay still. So I'll continue on with this, and if I find anything, I'll show it to you. 
All right, I'm all dissected. So these are all my bad packs. So I've got eight of those. And I've got about six good ones over there, or what I think are good. I'm gonna charge these up, see if they hold their voltage and everything before I reuse them, of course. So this was the end pack. And that's where it was riveted and soldered, and you see there's no corrosion, so that's pretty good. And this one had one brass and one copper, and there's no corrosion on either one of them. So I was not really concerned. I tested this end pack, and it tested at zero volts, so it's definitely bad. So I'm not even going to bother testing all these. They're all just bloated and puffy. So I'm not going to trust them for anything, but... That was it. Thought it would be interesting to show this since there's a lot of build videos on using these packs, but I don't think I saw any failure and disassembly videos, so there you go.